Humans bad. Humans bad. Hi there, my name's Martin All Times and I'm the owner of the Imaginati Studios. When we actually approached 20th Century Fox to talk about the license, when they did the original movies, there was no such thing as video games. So at the time, there were no rights assigned for video games because they didn't exist. And we were actually the first video game to get the license from them. Literally, they licensed the rights 24 hours after the launch of Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. We make games that where the endings can be changed depending on the consequences of the player's decision. And because of that, we couldn't base it on the characters in the movie because the characters in the movie cannot die because we can't change the canon of the, of the movies. And so that gave us an opportunity, a creative opportunity, to create our own clan of apes, our own tribe of apes, and our own humans who take part in this story and interact with them. And that means that what we can do is we can have characters that live or die. The consequences for the player and the choices that we can give to the player are much, much more important, much more dramatic than we would be if we were only allowed to take, uh, use the characters from the movie. Again, when you're building an interactive narrative and interactive story, it's really about how powerful those choices are and you've got to give players real dilemmas or choices that have consequences. If you were just playing as the apes, we know the apes are the heroes of the Planet of the Apes universe. So by putting you in charge of just the apes, there are no real consequences for you being bad. Whereas by having you also in charge of a group of humans and responsible for them and making decisions that affect whether they live or die, the consequences that you make on both sides, whether it's for peace or war, have real meaningful consequences. So you have to think through what your actions are on one side, what they're going to be later on on the other. There are a number of key things that we really wanted to do in terms of moving forward the genre of interactive movies. The first one was we wanted to get rid of the difficult control system. So Lots of people would enjoy this kind of experience, interactive story experience, but the controller, the standard console controller, is a barrier to most people playing these sort of games. So we kept the interface really, really simple. It's simply a question of making left-right choices and certain types of actions during combat or action sequences. And in order to do that and make that work, we had to remove traditional navigation. So it's almost an expectation in most console games that you can control the character walking around an environment. But if you think about it, the reason why you would navigate through an environment is largely to discover things, explore things. So you're almost like being a detective. So if you think of other games in this genre, most of the time the protagonist is some sort of detective. They're uncovering clues or there's a mystery to be un unraveled. But in Planet of the Apes, that just didn't make sense. So by removing navigation and keeping the choices really simple, left-right choices, and using a mobile phone, it means that the world of console games is opened up to a whole new audience. It means that you can create experiences that can not just be played by traditional gamers like myself, but also your friends, your family, uh, who don't normally play video games. So this game can be played by anyone from 8 to 80. We could never have made this game unless we had Unreal 4. When I started in video games, it was all about internal technology and you have an army of your uh, top programmers and it would pay, maybe take 50% of the development of the game simply to get the tools to a point you could actually build the game. You know, we started this studio uh, less than two years ago. This building you're in started in January the 4th with two people and everyone was able to be so productive from day one simply because the tools on Unreal are so mature and the technology behind it now enables people to make video games that look like they're AAA but they have a tenth of the budget and that is all down to the maturity of the Unreal Engine.